Hi everyone and welcome. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Jason Hammock and today I'm going to show you how to add extra storage space to your PC by installing a second hard drive. A great benefit of doing this is being able to back up copies of music, pictures, videos, or other documents that may be lost in the event that your primary hard drive fails. The type of hard drive we're going to be installing today is a SATA or serial ATA drive. This is the current computer standard today, and so all the cables and connectors we'll be dealing with are referred to by that name. The process for this is pretty simple and straightforward and doesn't require an extensive knowledge of computer hardware. That said, not all PC configurations are created equal, so make sure to check your owner's manual before you start any system upgrades. The system we'll be using today in our demonstration is a Dell Inspiron 530. It's a very common setup, very similar to what you would see in most off-the-shelf systems today. There are three key things to check that will be specific to your computer and will determine what you'll need to make this upgrade. First is your drive bay space availability. In other words, you need to check and see that your computer has an open slot in which to place an additional hard drive. Second, does your computer have an available power connection to power the drive? Finally, does your motherboard have an open data port for the drive? Now, if all of this sounds confusing, don't worry. It'll make perfect sense once we get into it. Now, first and foremost, for safety reasons, be sure to always power down and unplug your computer before doing any maintenance or upgrades. Now, we'll begin by opening the case. Depending on the design and manufacturer of your computer case, the steps may be different than what you see here. On our case, there are two Phillips head screws located in the rear that secure the side panel to the case. Once they're removed, the panel slides backwards and pops out. Remember, if your case is different or you're unsure how to open it, refer to your owner's manual. Now that we have the case open, it's time to go through our checklist from earlier. Is there a place to put the drive? As you can see, here is the single hard drive currently in the computer. Underneath it is an open slot which will hold a second hard drive. The slots are even labeled for us. Hard drive 0, the one that came with the computer, and hard drive 1, which is where our upgrade drive will go. The arrangement of these slots vary, but they will always be next to each other. Next on our list is to check for a power connection. You should see two cables connected to your hard drive. The larger connector with multicolored wires is the power cable. In our situation, this computer actually has two power connectors, therefore we don't need to worry about adding cables for that. If your computer does not already have an extra power connector, don't panic. For a few bucks you can easily purchase a cable that will take one power connector and split it into two. Check your local computer store or look online. So we're down to the third and final item on our checklist. Do we have a data port on our motherboard that we can plug it into? The easy way to find out is to start at the end of the cable plugged into the hard drive and follow it all the way to the motherboard. Now you can unplug this into the cable and if you want match it to an open port around it. Almost all systems like this will have at least one extra SATA data port. Unfortunately our system does not come with any data cables for an additional hard drive. Thankfully these are also easy to find. I purchased this one at a local computer repair and resale shop for about four bucks. Now let's get on to the fun part. We'll start by inserting the hard drive into its slot, making sure it's facing the same way as the other drive. Our case has holes that align with specific holes in the hard drive, so it can be securely held in place with screws. Our drive came with the necessary screws we need to hold it in place, so we'll go ahead and put those in now. Next, we'll go ahead and plug in our data cable. We'll locate the data port on the motherboard and plug the cable into it. It will only connect one way, so be careful. Use the data cable on the other hard drive as an example if necessary. We're almost done. Take the unused connector from the SATA power cable and plug it into the hard drive. Remember, contacts to contacts. If you had to buy a cable for your original power cable to split it into two connectors, don't forget to plug the other one into your original hard drive. Now that all our cables are connected, we need to put the computer back together. For your case, just reverse the steps you took when taking the side panel off at the beginning. Once you have your computer all hooked up, you'll want to power it up to boot into Windows. The drive will not be ready to use just yet. Go to the Windows Control Panel. 
you'll want to open Computer Management. Depending on your version of Windows, this may be listed under Administrative Tools. In the Computer Management window, select Disk Management. Your new drive will show as an unallocated partition. Right-clicking on this will open your options. Choose New Simple Volume. This will take you through the process of setting up the drive. Click Next. The next page will ask you to specify the size of the drive. Windows automatically will show the full size of the drive. Clicking Next will take you to the option of what letter you want to assign to it. This part is up to you. Choose whatever you like, then click Next. Now you are at the Format page. Leave the options for file system and allocation unit size to NTFS and default. In the box marked Volume Label, feel free to name the drive what you want. A good idea would be something to remind you of what you'll be using the drive for. Click Next, and you will be shown the summary of all the options you picked for the drive. If you're satisfied, click Finish and your drive will start to format. The amount of time it takes to format the drive will depend on how much space is on your drive, so more storage will mean a longer wait. Once it's finished, you're ready to go. Congratulations! With just a little help, you've just installed and prepared a new hard drive for your computer. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Check back next time when I'll help you upgrade your flux capacitor on your 82 DeLorean. My name is Jason Hammack. Thanks for joining me today.